name is akram alam i am a first year mbbs student from mgms wardha and my topic is chemio osmotic theory the man you see over here is peter michel who proposed this hypothesis chemio osmotic hypothesis and so i believe he deserves to be in the first slide itself moving on to the next slide you can see my contents are in the form of a flow chart because i am going to proceed in the same flow in introduction we will to we will undergo two aspects what is oxidative phosphorylation and what is chemio osmotic hypothesis under chemio osmotic hypothesis we will discuss another two aspects first is generation of proton gradient and the atp synthesis under atp synthesis we will then discuss two other aspects one is structure of atp synthesis and then binding chain mechanism the mechanism which tells us how the atp is formed moving on to the next slide so what is oxidative phosphorylation the simple definition of it would be the process of synthesizing atp from adp and inorganic phosphate coupled with electron transport chain is known as oxidative phosphorylation it's difficult to understand chemiosmotic hypothesis it's difficult to understand oxidative phosphorylation by this simple definition that's why the hypothesis came chemiosmotic hypothesis moving on to the next slide so this is a basic introduction in a form of a flow diagram for chemiosmotic hypothesis it was proposed by peter michel in 1961 it explains the mechanism of oxidative phosphorylation it tells us how this oxidative phosphorylation works we will uh, as i have already told that we will study this chemiosmotic hypothesis under two headings first is generation of proton gradient and the other is atp synthesis moving on to the next slide now generation of proton gradient why this proton gradient is generated this is due to the transfer of protons from matrix to intermembrane spaces and why this transfer of protons is taking place this is due to the flow of electrons in this electron transport chain when electrons flow through this electron transport chain then the transport of protons takes place from matrix to intermembrane space and why why these electrons are flowing in this electron transport chain it is basically due to the oxidation and reduction reaction taking place now see when substrate gets oxidized it loses electrons these electrons are taken up by nad plus which then reduces into nadh plus h plus then the electrons which are lost by the nadh plus h plus are taken up by the fmn which reduces to fmnh2 now you can see how the electrons flow uh, how the electrons flow from substrate to fmnh2 because of the oxidation and reduction reaction taking places in between taking places in between in the same way the electrons flow through this entire electron transport chain by the oxidation and reduction reaction taking place here so when the electrons flow in complex 1 four protons are pumped from matrix to intermitochondrial space when it flows through complex 3 four protons are pumped from matrix to intermitochondrial space and when it flows through complex 4 only two protons are pumped from matrix to intermitochondrial space one point is to be noted that in complex 2 there is no transport of protons transport of protons takes place in complex 1 complex 3 and complex 4 now oxidation of when we take the case of oxidation of nadh2 electrons flows through complex 1 complex 3 complex 4 so four protons uh, are translocated in complex 1 four protons are translocated in complex 3 and two protons are uh, translocated in complex 4 so total 10 protons are translocated from matrix to intermitochondrial spa uh, space um, uh, during the oxidation of nadh2 but in case of fadh2 electrons flow through complex 2 complex 3 and complex 4 so no protons in case of complex 2 four protons in case of complex 3 and two protons in case of complex 4 are so all together during the oxidation of fadh2 total six protons are translocated from matrix to intermembrane space
moving on to the next slide now you can see here also what we discussed in the previous slide oxidation of nadh electrons flow through complex 1 complex 3 and complex 4 but in case of oxidation of fadh2 electrons flow through complex 2 complex 3 and complex 4 making 10 protons translocation in case of nadh2 and 6 protons in case of translocation of fadh2 now you know 4 protons make 1 ATP so 10 protons will make 2.5 ATP 4 protons make 1 ATP so 6 protons will make 1.5 ATP this is simple unitary method so we can say that oxidation of 1 NADH2 2.5 ATP is formed but in the oxidation of 1 FADH2 1.5 ATP is formed so here we can understand how the num how the we decide the number of it be formed during the oxidation of NADH2 and FADH2. Moving on to the next slide. Now, ATP synthesis, which we are gonna study under two headings: ATP synthase and then binding chain mechanism. So, under ATP synthase, we will first study about its structure. It is made up of two subcomplexes, F0 subcomplex and F1 subcomplex. F0 subcomplex is present in the inner mitochondria membrane. It is hydrophobic in nature and it is made up of 10 C subunits. You can see over here 10 C subunits coming to the F1 subcomplex. It, it is present in the mitochondrial matrix. You see here, this is a portion of mitochondria where ATP synthesis is located. This is intermembrane space, this is inner mitochondrial membrane, and this is the matrix of the mitochondria. So F1 is projected in the matrix of the mitochondria. It is hydrophilic in nature. It is made up of nine subunits. We will only discover or discuss about gamma, beta, and alpha. So gamma subunit is attached to the F0. Gamma subunit is attached to the F0 subcomplex. And gamma subunit is in the form of a stick around which alpha and beta subunit is are present in alternate fashion alpha beta alpha beta alpha beta you know the alternate fashion so i think the structure of atp synthesis is clear moving on to the next slide so before we um, study about binding chain mechanism uh, it is important to know about the different conformational forms of beta subunit three conformational forms of the beta subunit one is the o form T form and L form. O form has the low has no affinity for substrate. T form has the highest affinity for the substrate, but L form is in between of B form and T form for the affinity for the substrates. Substrates. So with the definition, it is clear that ATP will be released in case of O form, whereas ATP synthesis will take place in T form. Moving on to the next slide now the binding chain mechanism the mechanism which will help us understand how the atp synthesis is taking place so <coughs> you see over here this is the section of mitochondria zoomed out section this is the zoomed out section of mitochondria where the atp synthesis is located so this is the inner mitochondrial space this is the inner mitochondrial membrane and this is the matrix of mitochondria so when protons are pumped from in uh, inner mitochondrial space to the matrix it causes a physical rotation in the f0 complex this physical rotation in f0 complex causes physical rotation in gamma sub gamma subunit and this rotation of gamma subunit ultimately rotates the alpha and the beta subunit so what happens due to the rotation of alpha and beta subunit we will see in the other diagram which is this diagram so this is only this is the diagram which we see when we see this diagram from here that is from above you can see gamma subunit you can see 
you can see gamma subunit and which is surrounded by beta subunits you can say that why you are not able to see the alpha subunits if we are seeing this diagram from here then we should also see the alpha subunits here i think the alpha subunits have been ignored so that to reduce the confusion so how will you understand uh, how the ATP, here we will understand how the atp synthesis is taking place now, to understand the atp synthesis we have to concentrate on one part that is the this part first so you can see this is the l form of beta subunit when atp where atp and inorganic phosphate attaches when it rotates here comes the t form where the atp synthesis takes place and when it again rotates here comes the o form which finally releases the atp so what we are seeing that due to the rotation at one place three different conformations of beta subunit are coming this conformational change in beta subunit due to the rotation of the uh, beta sub this is due to the rotation of the uh, atp synthesis molecule we are seeing the conformational change in the beta subunits this conformational change is actually forming the atp and this mechanism is called the atp this mechanism is called the binding chain mechanism the mechanism which explain us about the atp synthesis so we will summarize our whole presentation in this flow chart so under introduction we studied about what is oxidative phosphorylation the definition of oxidative phosphorylation and to understand this oxidative phosphorylation we move to chemiosmotic hypothesis under chemiosmotic hypothesis we got to know about how proton gradient is generated due to the flow of electrons in electron transport chain and we also got to know that why NADH2 and FADH2 forms 2.5 ATP and 1.5 ATP respectively. Then moving on, due to this proton gradient how ATP synthesis takes place, uh, We uh, then we moved on on that topic. To understand ATP synthesis, we first uh, and uh, we first try to understand the structure of ATP synthase and then we move to the binding chain mechanism the mechanism which explains the ATP synthase but between these topic between these two topic we've uh, we studied about beta subunit and its different conformational forms because this is very important if we want to understand this mechanism under binding chain mechanism we then got to know that how the rotation of the beta subunits is actually forming the ATP and which was our final result which was our final uh, result and which we wanted to know so with this I end my presentation uh, thank you very much